Welcome to What's My Thesis. I'm your host, Javier Proenza, and today my guest is Molly Siegel. Molly, we were talking, you were originally from Oakland, right? I am. And then you spent time in Boston. Was that because of school? Yes. Okay. And then uh, when when in that did you start getting into art? Like, what, what kind of work do you do? You, are you a painter? I'm a painter. I... Primarily, you don't identify as, like, somebody that does other stuff? No, I wish I, wish I did sometimes. I think it's cool when artists, like do a bunch of like kind of like let the idea sort of dictate what they make yeah, but yeah. um but i i rely on my hands and yeah. so like um uh so i'm a painter nice um i make objects and then when like how old were you you went to schools directly to paint yeah yeah i was always like i um i was always like the good drawer like i okay. sort of think a lot about like the i feel like there's like two main streams that contemporary artists kind of find themselves in and one of them is like what i call like the sketchbook kid of uh -huh. like this like kid who was just better at drawing than everyone else in the fourth grade and is like you know using it as social currency um mm -hmm. and drawing you know like uh so i spent like my uh my junior high and high school like drawing and selling little tupac drawings and little Dope. drawings of people and stuff and like followed like the pats on the back to um to art school and okay. then was like so uh, then you were doing commissions were, like were you also a big tupac fan i mean you're from oakland I mean, I'm so from maybe. oakland so yeah. it was like in the air you yeah. know um you know it was like a big deal you know yeah. um but um but i wasn't like i'm like a huge like music person i'm just trying stuff. to figure out what you were wearing back then oh <laughs> i mean well uh fair 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 um you know there were phases but by high school there would have been a lot of brown lip liner there would okay. have been some big hoops there would have been a lot of um vaseline slicked back hair um Whoa, kind okay. of intense uh kind of intense uh oakland white girl <laughs> stuff um uh you know um just because i feel like wherever i've been i've always wanted to be like how do i fit in like what am I? What, yeah, how, yeah, how, yeah. How do I fit in here? Like what are we doing? Um, yeah, and, but it's also it's fair that it's your, it's part of the culture, right? So you're like hanging out there, right? Yeah. Like I mean, you know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, I, I mean there was like, yes. Um, no, it was a uh, you know it was Oakland in the 90s. you know nineties. Um, <laughs> so it was like uh, yeah. So I was just sort of always really really good at drawing. Um, my sense of art was like, how good can you draw hands and stuff and okay. like. What were your influences when you weren't doing Tupac drawings? Like, because that seems like you were doing it, like, like you said, for social yeah. currency. Yeah. What, what would you like? What was your favorite thing? Because I used to draw just like pretty girls from like my sister's teen magazines. Yeah. With, with ballpoint pens. Um, telephone wires. Telephone, telephone wires. wires, like in the sunset, was a big thing okay. for me because I thought they were like so. So I've always like kind of loved like beautiful grime a little bit or something <laughs> um you know i was a huge frida kahlo okay. person um the, like the early influences from then like i really didn't know that many i, I had no idea about contemporary art like okay. at all but then i was also because i was in oakland i was also like in a fair amount of like programs for like at-risk urban youth um because <laughs> because know, of the hoops. because because no just because oakland <laughs> you know like because i was going to oakland public schools and they were available yeah. and i loved you know but and so those were like very kind of like mural focused like political focused and i kind of ended up with like a mild chip on my shoulder about like the ways that we offer art programs to inner city youth or something where i'm like yeah. why does this have to be political or do good yeah, yeah, like yeah. why can't why, why can't you know like yeah. i remember like you know like there was like a rap and somebody you know like or just like people would be like oh yeah i want to make money you know i want to make my work about money and they'd be like but don't you want to make work about um, oh yeah <laughs> about environmental racism <laughs> and like going looking back like i agree you know like i come from activists and progressives and like they're right but like the way it was sort of shoved it's also down like our a, throats where it's like you can rap but only about you know social justice or like it's got to have a positive message and yeah i think that there's like real beauty in like just letting people like kind of helping people make whatever they want to make you know yeah, yeah. even if it's like you know upsetting yeah. or or doesn't agree with like your politics you know 
Um, I don't know. I mean, but I, I bet some other people in the program, you know, were uh, grateful to learn about environmental racism. I don't know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> environmental racism. Is that like when, you, is that like your neighborhood? Is that like yeah, a food desert like, type thing? It's okay. a food desert. I mean, in our case, like in Richmond, California, which is neighboring Oakland, you know, there's like a power plant or like oil, you know, like the air is really bad. It's like Aaron Brockovich shit. It's sort of, oh, you know, wow. yeah, I mean. Wait, what's causing that bad air? Sorry. I don't know, like a power plant or a gas plant. There's like a, um, uh, you know, it's just sort of like the rates of asthma in you know uh, i did not know this um community i mean now i'm like trying to remember but there's just like a general sense of um putting things like power plants like um oil sort of stuff like more you know in poor communities which in the bay area also end up being black and brown communities Mm -hmm. um and you know asthma rates are up um you know, it's the air is worse, the water is worse. Flint is a good example of like just sort of, and there's also yeah, just yeah, sort yeah. of like, you know, um, government wise. So then it neglect. also does have the environmental, like, in, environmental in the environmentalist sense, right? It's not sure. just it's not just the fact that it's the food desert. Like, I, it it includes it, the answer to my questions was like, which one is it? Is it oh. like, is it like, you know, you're in an environment that's not necessarily conducive to, um, oh, no, yeah, I see what you mean. No, it's, or, it's, it's or specifically it's, it's, like, like Flint, I think, is a good example or something where yeah. it's like both, it's a physical, it's, or I yeah, guess, yeah. I guess they're both physical. I don't know. Well, no, I'm saying it's yeah. like, it is bad for the environment yes but it it also is like the environment that you live in is toxic to you and it's true that like poor people are going to bear the brunt yeah yeah, for sure climate change you know and sort of it's like it's kind of an extended version of that Um, yeah did you hear about the pirates in uh there's like pirates people that live on boats in the bay in uh san francisco like are getting constantly harassed by pirates no like people are just coming onto their boats and they're stealing their like dinghies and like all of their like uh, you know you mean like people like in like Sausalito and Marin living in houseboats like or Or, no just people that have boats in the marina oh so like they're out on the boats and because they have to protect (laughs) their shit because they're getting yeah like with guns no I have not heard of these San Francisco pirates I mean, it's 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 just the thing that I've heard about. But yeah, I don't I don't know how how I'll say it sounds like uh, propaganda to me. <laughs> it sounds well, it, like anti anti uh, San Francisco, like sort of crime. Uh, um, yeah, uh, I don't know. Oh, I I mean, like, well, I mean, in Florida, there is a lot of looting during hurricanes. Yeah. So, like, I think just the idea, and it basically the the way that it was sold in the propagandistic sense is that there's homeless people on boats that are coming to like just rob these boats that are just out you know and it's and to me it was crazy that i mean how are the homeless people getting boats that that's one of the things that the guy asked is like yeah. those boats are expensive yeah man. <laughs> i mean i have i yeah 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 so it's just one of those things mm-hmm. but it is i do like the idea of pirates in san yeah, francisco I Bay. Love, hey god, you know god bless them i guess they I don't, don't have to only be somali mm-hmm. there you go <laughs> all right so then uh what do, what do you what are you like mostly interested in now in terms of your your kind of uh do, do you have a topic that you wanted to cover um or no i mean i we we could talk i i sort of one of the things i was sort of thinking about kind of coming in was sort of a way in which it, it is not like a totally fully thought out topic, but it's just sort of thinking about the way that like in socializing and in parties, I tend to sort of be in more intense than I mean to. And sort of like, if I'm hanging out with you, I immediately am like, well, what's going on with your mom or something. And sort of <laughs> like <laughs> the intensity of that kind of, and then I was talking to my friend, um, who just saw an artist talk of mine or just was at an artist talk of mine where I was sort of someone asked um, if I ever get like overwhelmed with despair because my work is a little bit of a bummer. Mm-hmm. And I was sort of talking about how I'm not like really predisposed to despair because I have like this like very human emotional blubber mm-hmm. that I feel like, you know, um, allows me to kind of like walk through 
things and just sort of is um, it uh, is the intensity mostly interpersonal like like where where you go straight to the core of what a person is or is it more of like you're always thinking about dark things and it comes out because that's no. more that's more what i am i just like want to know stuff okay. I, i'm nosy and i want to know stuff and I, I recently had a friend on the phone sort of like we were kind of like, and I thought we were sort of ending the conversation and she was like, I'm just trying to think of something meaningful to say to keep you on <laughs> or something. <laughs> and I'd never thought about the fact that like, I'm like, what the fuck are we doing? If we're not, if we're not talking about something that like means something, then like, what so are then, we doing? So then what, what is a topic that means something? Like, um, I mean, often it's like, uh, it'll start with just like, where are you from? And then like, like, oh, well, what's that like? Or where is your family like, or what's your family like? Or, you know, what's, you know, like, it doesn't really matter. It's just, but I find that it is sometimes like. You're prying sometimes. People yeah, feel like, yeah. Yeah. Or like what I think is generous. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people find, because like, that's, you know, like, like yeah, I get kind of, you know, like hurt sometimes if i'm in a conversation and nobody asks anything of me i'm like fuck yeah, you yeah. you know um <laughs> and so like what i think of is like generous conversation often people are like uh i don't really want to talk about that you know <laughs> and sort is of this, like where's the context is are, are you is this at art openings or are you like this is one-on-one -on -one? um uh is it one of the most, things most social events most most social so like events parties. and then and then also probably more so when alcohol is involved or something you know there's okay. like more yeah parties um art events okay um, so you're you know. not doing this when you're you guys are going for a hike well i mean i am doing it if we're going for a hike okay, so because like is, i only go on hikes with people who like are already good with that i think it's i think yeah, it's yeah. more probing or like more of a problem with people who i meet or, I mean, it's it's not even a problem. It's just sort of the way that I, I find my people is that okay. there are some people who are like, oh, um, I don't want to be part of this conversation. And then there are other people who are like, yeah, wow. like you, this fungus on my toe is like not going anywhere. And I'm like in a lot of, you know, like just like or, you know, yeah, I, I fucking hate my dad. And I don't know, you know, like yeah. or whatever it is. It's just sort of um, tend to be. Do you do you are you mostly asking questions or are you also contributing like v uh, vulnerable personal details huh. is it reciprocal or are you just nosy are you as uh, as open a book as you're expecting people to do to be i think so okay. i think so yeah so yeah. you like come in and you lead with like i hate my dad <laughs> yeah i mean i don't hate my dad but like um but i've certainly like opened conversation i'm open to hating my dad <laughs> <laughs> no i mean you know, uh, I, I think, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know how vulnerable it is sometimes, but, um, so it's not always vulnerable. It's just personal. Yeah. 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 yeah it's not yeah. like, and again, like, necessarily about feelings. I don't know if that's like totally a, like, I'm like, I don't think that's an actual topic or something, but that's the only thing no, that but I, I mean, sort of think about in terms of like, what do I nerd out about is I nerd about, out about like interpersonal relationships and sort of like getting to the marrow of a thing is sort of something that I really like to do. Okay. Um, well, and, I mean, I can relate to that a little yeah, bit. You I know? mean, I, I, I would imagine if you're, if you're I, what, got I, an interview podcast. For, for me, what, the things that I like the most, it, first of all, if I find out that you've been a part of a cult, I have a very hard time not asking about that, sure. you know? Uh, but I also really like to talk about people's like religious trauma, essentially, yeah. not like without getting too, but I really find that interesting because you can tell a lot from like, you know, it's like, um, you can tell a lot of, about a person based on that. Mm -hmm. Like, because even I find like, even if like, for example, I grew up Catholic, right? How Catholic? I mean, I, I in Rome. So like I, I grew up in Rome it, it, over there. So it's very different than over here. I got confirmed, I think. Confirmed is the teenage one? Yeah. Okay. I think so. Or I was working on it. But anyway, I was I did take communion. Okay. And all that. We went to uh, a really nice church in uh, that was like Jesuit in um in in, in, in like near uh I guess a Campo di Fiori. So it's like, it, it was really like a nice and inspiring and it, yeah. it influenced my art making. I'm not uh, like, I'm agnostic now. You and know. when you got confirmed though, were you all in? I don't, I, I, I need to correct that. I don't think I was confirmed. Okay. I think I did the confirmation classes and then it just kind of fizzled out. But 
like my parents weren't really strict about it. They just yeah. kind of did it. And it was like a nice cultural experience. You yeah. Know? It wasn't like weird or creepy. I know people have had really bad experiences with the Catholic church. Yeah, I mean, it, it seems you know, so. Yeah. yeah. Especially in San Francisco, there's like pretty well documented stuff. I mean, it about... feels, feels somewhat universal. Feels like. Oh, no, I, I, that, wasn't a, that wasn't a jab at San Francisco. Uh, no, I'm just, I, saying, I'm just that saying that I feel that, like, like if you dig into most, you know. Uh, yeah, it seems Boston like, probably too. All I the mean, big I cities. Mean, yeah. 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 But uh, I, the the San Francisco's one is present in my my mind because of because Kamala Harris was the thing and it was part of her scandal mm. that she like didn't prosecute and like yeah. people were really upset. But anyway, we don't have to talk about politics. But um, the it's interesting. No, I, I I find those things interesting. What about you? Like, what what is your religious background? Um. Well, this is interesting. Um. Were I'm... you in a cult? No, I mean, <laughs> you you can tell me. I don't think so. Um, I'm Jewish, but okay. um, I come from socialist Jews. So okay. I grew up very unreligious. I like not believing in God. Parents don't believe in God. Grandparents don't believe in God. Okay. Um, uh, and but I also come from deep believers. Like sometimes when I talk to people who grew up really um, deep believers in social justice, deep believers in socialism. Um, my grandparents met, uh, in New York, you know, passing out communist literature. Mm -hmm. Um, so like I come from like a line of, um, leftists and progressives who, um, who believe as idealistically and fervently, um, as I think many religious people do. And also, yeah. um, with as you know and, and believe in the idealist of like well we haven't really seen it play out the way we want but we we believe anyway you know like we believe in this idea mm -hmm. and so like um like i grew up going like like we did may day um celebrations okay. where so on the first it would be whenever people could get together in May. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and it would be like all these like Berkeley hippies and yeah. um, and Oakland hippies, um, you know, and there would be like a uh, a um, like a May Day play that was about the politics of that year that the kids would do. And so we'd all be like Robin Hood, but it's really about abortion rights or whatever it is. And the first time my husband came, uh, you know, and I brought him. And he was like, this is Jesus camp. Like, cause it is very much like kids who are like too young to kind uh -huh. of know what they're saying being like, but what about their, their, their terrible ideology of the right or something, yeah, yeah, you know? Yeah. And it's just like, and I'm wearing like a little, you know, cooks like our, like a fryer tuck outfit or something. Well, what's your husband's background? A Catholic. Oh, uh, uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> but, but a not as, not as um but like you know not particularly religious i don't think yeah yeah um i think i i was probably going through the 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 teenage i didn't really think about it maybe until i was 15 because it wasn't that present of a thing yeah you know but that that's probably when i started uh getting into like god isn't real and all that goth shit that you go through and then like you know i mean i i just still don't really think about it but i do hmm. think that the upbringing is interesting you know yeah. the context in which you were brought up well i i had sort of like a crush on god you know like kind of growing up or something like i had a head start teacher who was like doing some real i was like a little weirdo kid who was hanging with adults and uh cheryl at head start was like really trying to indoctrinate me and i would like come home from this like government uh <laughs> um like preschool program and like be telling my parents about you know like cat you know cows that were you know th the, the plagues of the cows and many colored shirts and honey and samson like just like all of these stories that i don't remember anymore because i was like five but i would come home and like telling kind of deep cut Bible stories. Mm. Um, and I remember being like so impressed because she once told me that like God was her dad. And I was like, oh, that's really interesting. She was like, I don't have a dad, but Jesus is my dad. Um, wow, that's and then, intense. And then I th always thought Catholicism was really cool because like it's, um, you know, it, there, there's pageantry, there's, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, costumes, there's sort Incense. of, yeah, yeah, there's drama in this way. And it's like the thing of the movies or something. Yeah. And so like, I think I had like, and then I sort of have like this, um, 
I have like a very like, oh, Jesus seems he seems cool. You yeah. know, like he seems like he was doing cool things. And I've met some Christians, a few who like are just so open and loving because they really feel like they are walking in Jesus's paths. And I was like, that seems cool that she's like, she seems more patient and kind than other people. Um, but I also have like none of the, um, none of like the trauma, you know, like none of the uh, pain or trauma or anything mm. else that kids who grow up worrying about heaven and hell do, you know, <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know that I ever really got that caught up in that. That's oh, like, yeah? That, yeah, I think those, like, death was so far of a, a concept, and I was, oh. I, was, I was mostly bored, you know? That's interesting. Yeah. I think, I think... Uh, like, like, when when they weren't... I, I can... I swear I can't... I can barely remember. Like, I remember one time I was sitting there after I'd go, having gone to church for so long, and I, and I, I go... Oh, so this guy just tells stories from the Bible. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, no. And and makes them relevant to today. And I just like I had I used to like, you know, there there was this crucifix that they would come like talking pageantry yeah. and they would put it right at the at, at like you know, in front of the yeah. altar and they'd screw it in and it had this like flashy thing and to me it looked like it was a sheath for a yeah, sword yeah so i imagine you know this was around the time of like a highlander mm -hmm. i feel like i'm starting to get a vibe that since you grew up in the 90s yeah. and and the fashion and it, just the fact that you wore a uh, brown lip liner yeah yeah can... <laughs> we're like we're around the yeah. same age <laughs> yeah but yeah and so so um the um yeah like that's basically my experience of it was just kind of very you know, like removed. It, it was just a place that I hmm. went and I listened. I was not like very devout or anything, huh. Huh. you know, and like. So so no fear, no fear of heaven or hell. No, no just no fear I, I do have guilt. I don't. Yeah. Does your husband have guilt? Well, I mean, he spent a long I mean, he spent most of his childhood just worrying about heaven and hell oh, wow, and stuff, man. you know, That's like, uh, you know, um, I mean, not most of his, you know, uh, He's he's in animation and he spent a lot of time praying that um, the maker of Ren and Stimpy would get a new show, but was like very devout in his dumb child way, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and sort of um, but like took prayer very seriously. And I think took um, took sort of the whole. Yeah, I think I think maybe sounds like yeah. carries more guilt than you possibly. Well, I mean, I think. So why are you so interested in religious trauma if you, if you don't have any? Uh, I mean, I do like, I, I think the guilt is, it's just, I don't have it in specific, like, it's just not internalized like that. Mm. You know, like, I think that, uh, the concepts of being pious and all of that is definitely something that's ingrained in you. Also, there's like it, Catholicism. I don't know if other religions are like this. I don't, I feel like, um, Protestants are not, but the, the idea of like, it's like, it's a, all about redemption, right? Like, yeah. you know, like you can be a shitty person and on your deathbed, you're like, you repent. And like, it's, you know, so like, it is a very, um, it's a very interesting mechanism where you don't necessarily have to be that obs in, in, entrenched in the religion to have the sure. the mechanics of it affect the way, you know, like to me, it plays out in my relationship to the capitalist like system right mm. where it's like if i'm not constantly working on something i feel guilty sure you know yeah or if i'm not you like know like the sort of like the, the cult of productivity or yeah, something yeah 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 but but it, i i mean i've had it since i was like you know a kid because that's the, yeah. the stuff do you so you don't are, are you like uh have, did you ever live in communes like uh, are, are, in any socialist kind of context were you like an activist uh, no, my parents were sort of like did some dabbled in communal living and we had uh, friends and family in Humboldt who were sort of doing a more kind of communal deal. Um, but we didn't. I was raised, you know, on picket lines and in protests and, you know, just sort of like um, uh, writing letters to George Bush about the war, just in case I haven't made clear my exact age, <laughs> um, you know, like telling him to stop, you know. Yeah. I think about that. I have, yeah. I have that. That war was like an awakening for me, in, in in the sense of like, I had never. I totally bought into. I was in Florida, and I totally bought into like all the patriotic shit. Yeah. And then, and then, like, 
I well, just, I'm talking about Bush one and oh, War okay. one. Oh, okay. Like War so, one. like so, this like baby, yeah, it's like five year old, six year old, seven year old Molly, like <laughs> writing, "Dear George Bush, this war is wrong. I get no war for oil," kind of stuff. Yeah, um, yeah. but, uh, but I, you know, you just sort of, I, I get the part about Christianity and redemption being like, oh, well, at the last minute you can make everything right. But I think that's like one of the 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 beauties of christianity a little bit is like yeah this idea for for redemption i remember this um uh because it is so i mean and it's like it's shitty if you just are a shitty person and then go to god or something but like i think for humanity and to like have this idea of like oh i get to start over like this moment isn't this awful moment where things feel hopeless isn't um isn't the full extent of like the story or something or like that there is possibility to start over or something I think is. Yeah. I, I, I think ultimately it is it, it, that it does like conceptually work that way, yeah. but the, it, the way that it's institutionalized sure. and internalized becomes like the baseline is you're a sinner. <laughs> yes. 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 Which like, <laughs> so yeah. The, ba- the, yeah, baseline the baseline is like, you must repent. You must feel like shit about yourself all the time. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. I, I, so, I mean, for me, I just want to make clear, I do have some emotional yeah. trauma or, you know, some, some, uh, but even it, like, that's the power of that stuff. Even though, like, I mean, I must have really believed in that stuff at some point. I became, I think the thing that really, I remember more was like, you know, like a typical Western middle class kid of the time I got into like Eastern religions, hmm. you know, I started reading Taoism and all of yeah. that. And that was like kind of where, where like I just became more interested in spiritual spirituality, not spiritualism. That's like the yeah. seance shit, uh, but spirituality. And um, yeah, it like, so, I mean, I, I, f- I find all of it interesting because it is something that you don't necessarily like it. it it's, it's a, it's a, like, it would be like if you lived with the Code of Hammurabi as you're like, you know, like it's. I don't know what that is. <laughs> oh, that's like the first book of laws from like, I don't even know what period, but it's like one, it's like an old cuneiform tablet. Okay. Like uh, from really, really like, you know, I yeah. probably pre age Phoenicians, I think, and maybe. Okay. I don't know. I'm just saying things now. Well, I mean, I, I think I was sort of open to like, you know, cause I've like, I, you know, like, I sort of was open to like ideas around God a little bit, you know, or I was like, I don't know. Yeah. And, and very, very, and I still am like very like, yeah, if it serves you do yeah, it, yeah, you yeah. know, I don't, I don't care like what people do. And I see, I see people, you know, we're all looking for structure and narrative and peace and hope in like whatever. And we're, we're all finding that scaffolding you know wherever and if you find it in religion amazing if you find it in horoscopes cool if you find it you know like i just feel like people like are looking for a structure you know because we're floating through yeah yeah nothing um well, but i but yeah. i i kind of felt like there were a couple times going i don't think they'll listen to this but like experiencing the church the catholic church with my husband's family where Mm. like i would go on like christmas or something and was just really floored by like i don't think anyone in here believes or is paying attention to any of this like there was like and that was like kind of a shock to me where i was like oh no one here gives a fuck (laughs) yeah. <laughs> about any of this people are checking their phone i mean you know maybe it's like that's the you know maybe yeah, yeah. christmas you get a lot of people i don't know but it was like very because i'd always assumed i was like well i bet people really believe and find and find you know hope and all of that kind of stuff but like more of what i got from that is i was like oh you're here to make sure that people see that you're here and that you yeah, know like yeah, it, was, yeah. it was it was it's strange. performative in christmas mm-hmm. for sure like that's when like your mom convinces you to go. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know? and it was just strange to be in a room where I was just like, oh, I don't think anyone cares. Yeah, like no, it, 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 the the way that I have been able, like I was very lucky as a Catholic. You know, I grew up in in Italy, so I got to see and I studied a lot of that Renaissance like uh, yeah. re- revival of like you know pious art yeah. you, or, or, or art that was devotional and i've been to places where i, I can like you know if I, I don't know if you know who saint francis is but i've been to assisi 
and, uh, and that is like this monastery, or no, it's not a monastery. It's um, wherever the priests live. Like yeah, it, but it's this church, and it's a city basically just on a cliff. Yeah, and like, and there is something that may about it's like about where it is and how you feel that you're like, oh, maybe there is something, you know. But but it's like uh, there's a difference between Catholicism here and over there, where I think it's really awe inspiring, right? Like yeah. the architectures really old and 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 beautiful and like the the stories of the competitions to build the cathedral you know yeah. the, the cathedral and all that like all the little myths that are like ancient are really make it well but that's deeply moving like yeah. i i i remember i went to a i went to a funeral of a, a woman who i didn't know that well but who i know wasn't religious and it was a highly religious ceremony yeah, because yeah. her her mom was religious and that's intense. I was just sitting and she was young. And so it was like the whole thing was tragic. And I was just sitting there and I was really thinking about how kind of, I, I was in awe. I was in awe of, of, of our brains and our stories and these mm -hmm. like, these like elaborate things we set up and all of, you know, like I do think that there is, to me, I think that that is stunning and kind of beautiful and has had horrible results in some in some areas or something but yeah. I, I i am i am really moved by the the stories we tell and mm -hmm. sort of like the ways that we create our own myths and i'm don't personally believe that there is a sky daddy who is yeah, yeah. telling anybody what to do but i'm really um uh i'm really moved by the ways that we make and create and tell stories. And I think at its end, it's because like, we are aware, our big brains are just aware enough to know that we die yeah, and yeah. Are, don't know what happens next. And so there's been this like, really kind of amazing uh, storytelling culture to kind of make sense yeah. of that in a way. Um, yeah. But no, it, it, it is, it is, it's crazy. I, I, it's like I, Pollyanna nihilism, where I'm like, it's so sweet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I mean, it's it's also really human. I, f I find that people that are secular are, also have a hard time not like not uh, being. Well, I keep saying it uh, this way, just being dogmatic. You know, like you kind of referenced it earlier when you said that you were you grew up in a almost like religiously structured yeah. like, no i come yeah. from believers yeah and i come from dogmatic believers and yeah. believers who believe no matter what the evidence is presented you know like the, my yeah. my parents are going to believe in in socialism and yeah. you know like uh um and 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 there's also like kind of a i i remember once somebody casually i was having a nice conversation with a bus driver and then you know he was like do you know jesus and i was like oh, i'm an atheist mm -hmm. and he was like well how do you know the difference between right and wrong and <laughs> that and it is was always funny and it was such a it was it was because like i come from like the like the most like ethically dogmatic people i've ever yeah, met yeah, you know yeah. in terms of like if there's anything it's like there's there's strict structures about how you treat people you know and yeah, how yeah. you sort of um and the idea that like you know i mean i it was just very foreign to me that like god or punishment would sort of be part of part of like that that thinking or something or it was like yeah yeah, yeah. no i i yeah I definitely don't think atheism is a problem. You know, like I, I, I've, I've, <laughs> I've just heard people being like, "Yeah, we need to deal with all these atheists." I'm like, "What?" Oh, yeah. You, you know, I mean, like, but atheists sometimes are like vegans, where it's like, "Okay, we get it. We yeah, fucking yeah, yeah. get it. You don't have to. You could talk about something else." You know, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. and and I think it's kind of, you know, like I, I just don't know. And it, and maybe if I had like more trauma around Christianity or any religion, I would be a lot more like fuck this yeah um and i am sometimes like kind of what you said about those um those 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 laws that i hadn't heard of sometimes i will like hear people talk about christian things and i'll just be like oh it's strange that like we all it's weird that we're all 
following this very old <laughs> fairy tale text and like thou and, shalt and, not murder i mean i mean that that's a helpful one yeah, but yeah, there is yeah. it seems like there's a lot of parts of it that are much you know like how many cows for a wife yeah. for you know like <laughs> um you know it's, it's tattoo you know it just seems like there's a lot of things yeah, that yeah. um that it just seems strange to me that like um we've somehow uh um kind of like mixed up our ethics with whether people believe in a specific story. Yeah, no, it's definitely, well, I, I, I was going to say that the, um, the atheists that you're talking about specifically, to me, they kind of feel like, it's like, um, like if you're a Satanist, you're still caught up in the Catholic game, sure. yeah. you know? Yeah. So like, if you're an atheist and your whole existence is disproving, yeah. like religion, like, you're still caught up in God, you know, like you, you like it's not a freeing thing. It's still try. It, it, you're still, to me, you're still displaying the same like um, tendencies, the same human tendencies that make people religious. Sure, just in an opposite direction. Sure, right? yeah, in a defiant one. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I mean, and and I mean, but I think people again, like I just really think we need, we need scaffolding. Yeah. Like like you know like, and so people are gonna find it where they can. I think that like um, probably it's hard to imagine really like w like I, I it's hard to imagine what the fuck is going on and and it is just like a constant grieving process that we all have to do you know we're like uh, almost always grieving our existence like if we stop to think too long yeah. it might come up yeah you know yeah uh, and i a, think and i think uh, sorry no i was just gonna say exist existence is just a fucking crazy thing to, <laughs> like, <laughs> to begin what, with you were gonna say something well sorry. a couple of things one i feel like one of the things i think a lot because a lot of my friends have kids uh -huh. and my sort of take on that is it's like oh well there's no way you won't fuck them up you know yeah, because yeah. because it hurts to be here yeah, and yeah. like you can do everything right and it's still gonna hurt to be here yeah, and yeah. and and they'll have they'll have notes you know and so like all you can do is you can try to fuck them up in a different and less you know scarring way than your parents did you or whatever but it's probably which is probably just a reaction to <laughs> which is a reaction and often like you'll miss the other thing that was coming yeah but then the other thing i was going to say about that is i think that's also where like that emotional blubber comes back in where I, I do think that like people who i've experienced who are really suffering with depression like are not wrong <laughs> you know it's just they're more yeah. they're more raw and that like some of us have a lot of blubber where we're just sort of like, oh, I'm not going to think about, you know, like the impending and, or just like uncountable ways that, you know, um, that 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 we're fucked and complicit and, yeah, yeah. you know, that this is like, you know, on a on a in a garbage fire. You so, know, so you don't dwell on that. You don't think about that ever. I mean, I do think about that. We're but in a garbage fire, but, but you I have don't. A buffer. I, I have a buffer. And yeah, I think yeah. that's maybe why, like, some of my work is like looking more directly at the garbage fire, because. So what do you, what do you like deal with thematically? Oh, um, I know it can be difficult with painting because it's not necessarily always conceptual, but there is some yeah. of, somewhat of a narrative I mean, element to it. My work sort of involves around, you know, like uh, sort of a dystopic California landscape um, that kind of is... As uh, opposed to now? <laughs> I mean, is sort of like, and it's about sort of drought and finite resources. Yeah. And there's a lot of, um, you know dead whales and orgies and sort of uh well, the, um, the dead whales are they is it true or have you heard about the thing with the um that the the uh what are they the like turbines some... the wind turbines they like release a frequency that makes that that like makes whales hurt themselves um have you heard about this if maybe very casually okay but. i don't know I, I i i'm not trying to spread misinformation i just kind of caught a glimpse of this yeah uh but i don't know if that's like verified but that's pretty fucking crazy <laughs> well, what, what what whales are you talking i mean but what? i mean i think that like there is an interconnectedness sort of like whether or not um that you know like that the part where like we're all affecting each, each other, other yeah. you know, it's sort of like, you know, I think a big part of like my work is sort of, yeah. Yeah. 
Well, do, uh, do you, where do you stand on like the idea of um, co collective unconscious? Like not necessarily something that happens psychically, but you know, like you, the, the kind of ideas you can have in t contemporary society are very different than the ones you would have in like, say the 1800s, right? Okay. Like, do you, do you subscribe to that? Is there like, it, like is there a zeitgeist? Oh, th th do like, people? Do some people say there's not a zeitgeist? No, I'm I'm wondering. I, uh, I mean, I just tr I'm trying to frame it in a way that uh, for an atheist and other atheists oh, that might listen, huh? You know, I don't know. I mean, I think about I don't think about collective unconscious at all that I'm aware of. Certainly not in that language. But mm -hmm. I, I definitely think a lot about context and okay. which maybe is the same. I'm not. Totally... That's how that's how I think of it because yeah. I'm just not into like, you know, there's a subconscious thing. I think just the ideas that are present within the the contemporary mindset yeah. you, will influence you in ways that you don't even know. Right? Sure. Like, I mean, I think, I think every, you know, I mean, I think that there's lots of, yeah, I think that we don't always know that, you know, what's, what's human nature and what's cultural or something, you know, like sometimes mm -hmm. like it's hard to, um uh um tell the difference or something but yeah i don't i don't spend that much time thinking about you the collective spend, unconscious no it's, uh it's well i mean it's interesting because I, I wonder if the context changes for that kind of work right like i mean i'm sure that uh what's it called like post-apocalyptic landscapes are not yeah. a not a new artistic uh uh endeavor right like mad max has covered sure, st yeah. stuff like that right yeah. especially like the kind that you you would see out here in la because since the industry yeah. is out here yeah but um what what interests you about specifically this landscape is it is it that rich like history of that that you get to draw on or do you like stray away from it i mean i think it's just i think especially coming back from from Boston and the East Coast when I did in 2014, uh -huh. um, I was just really struck by it. Like I was really, really, it. California was so big and it was so dry and it was so sprawling and LA just sort of felt like a place where I was like, I don't think people are supposed to live here. This yeah, is yeah. like a desert. Um, and it was also very jarring to like, you know, go to a, go to a, um, you know, an art opening and have to like walk through a tent city to go there. Yeah, and, yeah. um, and I was like, oh, we're, we're in the capital of the hunger games. And this is like a place where sort of great decadence is like really butted directly up with like disaster. And that feels really, um, I, I think I feel that really yeah, viscerally, yeah, yeah. you know? Um, and so like, it wasn't. It's not idealized the way, then what you're, what you're covering, right? You're not like romanticizing the idea. You're not working on that history. You're working on the reality that's happening right now. I mean, I'm react, you know, I'm sure that there's like art, has, you know, like. No, but, no, um, I, don't, I, I don't mean. I, I but mean, yeah, no, it's very, it's very like. You're not. This you're is not. just. This is just like. Sometimes I'll like walk through, or like sometimes like I just did a show or something, and I'll be like, oh yeah, this is what the world looks like to me. Yeah, does yeah. does it not look like this? To no, you? that's what I'm saying. So it's not. <laughs> yeah. You're not doing sci-fi. You're doing like. No. no yeah. No. It's I, contemporary apocalypse. I guess. Yeah. yeah. Or it's just like, oh, this is what it feels like. This is what it feels like to be here uh -huh. to me. You know, a little bit. Okay. Um, is sort of what I think yeah, of it yeah. as, and you know, like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're not drawing from like the historical concept because some some artists do that. You're just more. It's more of like um, a, a visceral experience that you're having right now. That yeah, you're, that you're yeah. There's to. like a self conscious part of me that's like, oh, should I throw in an art historical reference? No, that, no, like, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I'm, I'm, no. You you don't you yeah. don't have to. It's it, it's interesting. Yeah, I'm I the, I'm talking about it the way that I access yeah. that. You know, because yeah. I just watch a lot of sci fi. Well, you know? I will say. I was already making this work, but I read uh, Parable of the Sower maybe two or three years ago, maybe two years ago. Mm -hmm. And that as close to anything rocked my world and sort of was like, oh, this is what um, uh, this is. This is this feels very close to what I want to make in a way. So then, uh, but are you painting 10 cities or no? You just yeah, there's, 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 there's sometimes cities. tents in there. Yeah. OK, cool. Yeah. 
So, uh, okay. So then it's also a bit more documentary style, like in the tradition of a phot photographic kind of discipline, right? As like, it's like street painting, even though you're not doing it at pl plein air. Um, it's, uh, uh, I suppose. Yeah. Like documentary. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, Maybe that's, that's a stretch. A... I, I, I'm, I, that's, I'm just coming from my perspective yeah, as someone no, who studied photography. Uh, um, like a Dorothea Lang, like um, I mean, I, I know what documentary photography is. I'm just trying sorry, to think yeah, yeah. of like whether whether that, you, whether, whether that's applies. like a way that I would. I mean, I think it's definitely yeah. I mean, it's definitely taking directly from um, my surroundings, very much so. Yeah, yeah. Cool. And then um, does the uh, is there then like we are dealing with that socialist element that you grew up with well right? i mean that's funny because i've i've always said oh i don't think the work is political like i yeah. don't think because i don't <laughs> think it's because it's not um it's not saying what to do or it's not um it's not um tell it's not like there's no answers in it you know there's no um there's no like you should be doing this or you shouldn't be doing this i try not to um mm -hmm. but but i i think what I've realized is that, you know, like, it's inescapable. Is right? that, yeah. is that like the closer the work I make is to the person that I am? And like, one thing that I'm really proud of is that I feel like if you know me and you see my work, there's like, oh, yeah, that makes sense, yeah, you yeah. know, in a way, or like, but it, but then it also sounds like it's not burdened by being preachy, right? Because I mean, that, I don't, I, I work to not burden it, yeah, or like, yeah. I don't want it to be, it's preachy. not a jit prop. It, it, it's you well, know. because I, 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 I think there's my most of my experience with political art for mm. me, certainly for me and maybe at all, but maybe not. Is that just sort of like, I often feel like the political action gets watered down and the art gets watered down. And then you're sort of like, yeah, you kind of have nothing, you know, like, like when I would rather, um, you know, like, uh, go and um, canvas or protest or, mm -hmm. you know, give money to people or do things that are more direct, you know. Yeah. Well, um, in the context of today's art world, especially if unless you're like doing work through institutional yeah. funding, you're, you're kind of stuck like, uh, you know, you don't, <laughs> you're stuck being limited in what you can critique because the art market is like, you know, if you're in the art market, you're not necessarily getting a say in who's collecting the works. Right. And sure. It, it, but even outside of the market, like, let's say, like, I just think it's hard to do in a way that's like, yeah, yeah. that's actually, that's fair enough too. That's, um, but that's I, powerful and moving and sort of, yeah, I would say that I, I would say that the context makes it so that it's watered down and mm, it, maybe it, you yeah. know because yeah. it, because if you're trying to sell it you're not selling yeah. it to a person that doesn't yeah. have a, a home to like yeah keep it safe right you're you're nece you're you're necessarily making always tend to have to make work for people that can afford it yeah you know um the other thing i would say is i i have the robert franks the americans up there i don't know if you're familiar like but basically i would say that you know it's interesting to hear the way that you're saying the work is not political. I, I guess that kind of comes from that socialist like um, mindset. But like, I would say that there is like photography, like if you're documenting Hooverville in, yeah. y in the 19 whatever, I don't know when that Hoovervilles were. Probably <laughs> but, 30s. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, probably post uh, stock market crash. But um, but yeah, I like it. it's still like, you know, as, as, even if it's just within the historical art context, like somebody is documenting the fact that the, uh, the state of California, right? Like, I mean, except that these aren't, you know, they, they are, they're their paintings, you know, so they're not, they're not like, what, what would you call it in like a history class, like first um, yeah, but you, you, know. you would look at paintings from like the, the, you know, like in history class, you study paintings of the time, right? Like that, you, like the, that's how I know that France had, like was the, Paris was one of the first cities that had mobs, right? Mm -hmm. Because it was the first time people were painting mobs, right? So to some extent, like, I know that it can be fantasy. Anyway, it's, yeah. it's, yeah, it's, no, it's I mean, this I, conversation is like, we probably agree on, 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 yeah, on, on I, it, but I'm just saying that like, it's an interesting thing to, to, to sort of, um, to take a narrative form and like deal with, deal with contemporary issues like so directly, right? Like where it's representational yeah. uh, directly of the event as opposed to, 
taking it to like where like even like you you mentioned your husband's an animator yeah. right like with these things you can do pretty much anything so mm-hmm. the choice to narrow it down to that is a an interesting one it's a contextual one yeah right? yeah yeah no totally totally and and i think i think i i have like um I sometimes have like orgies or sex or sort of naked people running around okay. in there. And I've, <laughs> I've found that like, I like having them there because okay. it complicates sort of what's going on. You know, it like complicates the narrative. Cause like I, I did a residency recently that was in a law firm and I was like working, I was painting, I was like did four months where I was like painting inside of a, a working law firm downtown. Uh-huh. And they were so generous and so like they, it was a huge stipend and they were, it was great, but they were like, can you not paint sex or nudity or something? Because we are a working law office and, yeah, yeah. um, and the work was so much more of a bummer, yeah, you know, yeah. without that, like, I didn't realize how this sort of, um, and it felt more dogmatic in a way like yeah. the work without like because like because it is the decadence but it's also weirdly somehow ends up being like the hope or the the human contact you know like they're sort yeah, of yeah. like it's it's sort of um oh, and it also just ends up making them a little more confusing in a way <laughs> where it just sort of feels like a little um less like clear what i'm mm-hmm. um I don't know. It just it just sort of feels kind of right or something. But yeah, yeah, no. I mean, it is it is. Uh, it also t- speaks to like primal and carnal, mm-hmm. right? As society is crumbling, yeah. we're still just these animals yeah. Right, yeah. that have like basic needs, like yeah, food and whatnot. And I think a lot about like finite resources and like the the finite like finite resources like emotionally or finite resources of like you know, that happen in sex or finite resources that happen, you know, in our ground and oil and sort of like, I really like to kind of mix those up, you know, Mm -hmm. like I really, I want to, I want to like, and so I'm always kind of like trying to talk about like a wildfire in like a, in terms of like intimacy or like sexuality. And I want to like talk about sex in terms of like a natural disaster or sort of like, and sort of I'm, I'm trying to like mix up that imagery a lot, mm-hmm. a little bit. Um, what natural disasters, mostly fires or are you doing um, hurricanes? T- tornadoes, I mean, they're, they're, they're sort of uh, West coast kind of California. Okay. I mean, so, I mean, uh, there is this thing about like, how often do you think about the Roman empire? Do you, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I think I about it a lot. Really? Yeah. I, I don't think about the Roman empire at all, but I think about sinkholes like every day. Like, I don't okay. know why we're not going around thinking about sinkholes like every single day. How, how, how prevalent or prevalent are they? I mean, not prevalent enough for me to be thinking about them every day, but like the fact that they can just be like that, that there's, there's a th- I mean, I, it might, maybe it's, maybe you're it's, the, you're, you're from the generation that used to think about quicksand all the time. So maybe right, that, <laughs> but quicksand never really landed for me, you no, know, but you like, never afraid of it. I mean, yeah, I actually know someone that did step in quicksand. Oh yeah. Yeah. He had a surf, surfboard. Yeah. <laughs> he had a surfboard and he was, he was like, yo, it was scary. Yeah. Well, part of, part of socialist parents also was like really limited pop culture or like cultural, <laughs> like, so like yeah, yeah. The, I spent most of my childhood and adolescence smiling and nodding along and pretending like I knew what Nickelodeon or, you know, anything was because I yeah. wasn't allowed to watch TV, but it's interesting that you say that. I just, I don't know if you know who Katie Halper is. She does uh, Useful Idiots on, on YouTube. Okay. Uh, but um, she she just came out with a documentary about a Jewish camp that she went to. And she showed all the right wingers that were like calling it an indoctrination camp because it's communist and all yeah. that stuff. It, sounds, oh, it, was, it was a Jewish, it was, a, that's interesting. It was a communist Jewish camp. Yeah. Well, the, the, isn't, what's the kibbutz? What's the. Oh, that's, that's a different, that's a whole different. Well, no, no. I'm just saying, but there's like socialist like communities like that, right? Isn't I that mean, what that is? I mean, I would call them communal communities. communities? Okay. I don't, I don't think there is. I don't, I don't know. I am a, um, I'm sort of a staunch anti-Zionist, so I. Um, oh, so that's only in in is- Israel. I mean, my understanding okay, of a kibbutz is okay. that they are. I didn't want to make I it might, about Israel. What I, what I might call a. Um, uh, yeah, settler, I don't. I don't know if we really. Issue. Yeah, I, I would no, no, call no, that more don't. of a settler. I mean, maybe. I mean, if if there is like communist uh, Jewish camps, I'm 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 curious. Like, well, then, but, but I didn't have like. 
I, I never went to like sleep away Jewish camp. Like my family was okay. very like sometimes. Sometimes like I don't rec- like I didn't even know Seinfeld was Jew was like so obviously like coded Jewish because oh, I really? was like I don't like I didn't recognize that guy mm. at all you know like because I was just coming from um, other Jews you know like different sort of yeah yeah um, not not New Yorkers I mean they were New Yorkers but they were like even Larry David I would recognize Larry David as somebody in my family but like um uh but yeah no it's just but but also jews who i think you have like we you know we are very culturally jewish we did passover we did that kind of stuff but like there was no god involved i never went to temple i didn't mm. get a i didn't get a bat mitzvah i i did a i did a ceremony there was like a when when we did when we were 13 we did a ceremony at home um and um, you know, recited a poem about how your children aren't your children; they're the sons and daughters of life's longing for its. You know, like just hippie shit. Um, is that is that hippie shit, or is that uh, that part is exclusively hippie? It's not Jewish. The I mean, I know it as a sweet honey in the rock song, but I think it might be like a roomy poem or something. Uh, okay, I don't okay. know. It's like a it's like a old maybe not room. Yeah, it's a. So it's it was a, a synergy. I would say it's closer to. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't think it's Jewish. Okay, I don't okay. think it's uh, actively Jewish. That's but, funny. Um, uh, yeah, so, so like, I, I sort of felt, I mean, even growing up in Oakland, and I talk about this a lot with uh, some, a Jewish friend of mine, um, like, I didn't think that much about being Jewish. Yeah, and yeah. I didn't, and I never, um, and I, I, I sort of my identity was a lot more about my whiteness than about my Jewishness. And then as I've gotten older, I've experienced like more and more not pointed, but like general anti-Semitism. But like the first time I like experienced it, I was like, oh, are people still doing that? I, I didn't know we were still doing this. This feels this feels like a quaint or not, you know, like just sort of old and stuff. But um, yeah. uh, but I think also if you don't go to temple, if you don't publicly gather with other Jews, then maybe it's easier to not feel that kind of fear that I hear some Jews talk about when they yeah, when they yeah. do gather the vulnerability of like being public together or something. Yeah. But it's an interesting one. Uh yeah. I mean, I don't really have anything profound to say about anti Semitism, but it is um it's persistent yeah <laughs> it's really crazy like uh yeah that must suck uh you know to like i mean i i don't know how present it was for you i guess it doesn't sound like the 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 history was like weighing on you too you know yeah i mean it it wasn't and i don't and i like i see it and i notice it now and i know a it whole is book a about problem. You guys being persecuted, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, like I, I do think that it is part of like, like deeply embroiled in a you know racist, fascist sort of, uh, um, kind of bigger picture. But I, again, and I think this is to a large extent. I, I don't have. I don't I don't feel it in the mm. way that a lot of Jews I know feel yeah, it. And yeah. I have cousins and stuff who really are are deeply sort of invested in um like somatic generational trauma stuff, like where there's like, oh, I can feel the mm. um you know, that being said, am I somebody who's like hyper vigilant? Um, yes. Yeah, did, yeah. did I always think that was just because I grew up in Oakland in the nineties? Yes, you know, but so it's hard to know like where sort of some of your stuff comes from, you mm -hmm. know, whether it's just like who you are or, you know, um, yeah. But this is awesome. We got to talk about my favorite topic. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Just, yeah. 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 Uh, well, is there anything that you want to say before we wrap up that you that you might feel like you left out? I um, I always like to end on that because you know. Yeah. It's gonna maybe be a while before I have. I was, I was thinking have of back. stuff when we were there, but I think 
I think either we hit them or we don't have to hit them. Uh, all right, yeah, cool, yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. Can we promote some stuff for you? What do you have what going have? on? You have an Instagram? I do. It's molly.segal, M-O-L-L-Y dot S-E-G-A-L. Mm-hmm. Um, and Did you know that uh, Steven Seagal is actually Steven Seagal? And I, he changed it because he didn't want to sound Jewish? Are you fucking with me? I'm not. I used to tell people that Steven Seagal was my uncle and he didn't talk to our side of the family anymore because my dad beat him up. Um, <laughs> and no, I and I didn't know Steven Seagal was Jewish and I didn't. There's no, what, so he used to spell it S-E-G-A-L? Yeah, that's how he still spells it. He just, they just pronounce it differently. No, it's S-E-A-G-A-L. I oh, think. maybe he yeah. spelled, changed yeah. the spelling. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. But I, I think he I was. Think, I think he's not spelled like me, but yeah. um, but that's really funny because I did tell people I was related to him that's, as a kid. That's great. Um, <laughs> well, and I had no I, idea he was Jewish. So I had good no job, idea Steven. you were such a get. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you'll never know. You can't fact check how much related I am to Steven Seagal. So don't try. Um, yeah. So, okay. And then uh, you have a website too? Yeah, it's just my name, uh, dot com. Okay. Uh, Anything else? Uh, any show, um, upcoming shows? Well, I mean, You're pretty if active. You, yeah, I had a really busy summer. I don't have um, Anything that up? much. I mean, I've got to show up in San Luis Obispo, but it closes the 13th. So I think, okay. I don't, I doubt this will be up by then. Cool. Um, so yeah, uh, if, if something comes up before then, I'll, I'll, I'll write you or something, but All I don't right. think I have that cool. much coming up. And uh, uh, thank you for watching. We'll be back next week with another guest and another topic that may or may not be art related.